Welcome and good evening. On behalf of the college, I don't think I can adequately express what a delight it is to welcome you to this baccalaureate celebration and to the commencement weekend. You all have been waiting so long. And here we are together, and we do not take that for granted. I know that one, not one of you do either. It is a gift to be here together to celebrate these very, very special students in the class of 2024. Yes, I was going to say, let's give them a hand. Like, right, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> We honor their journeys and all of the hard work that they have put in to get to this point. And I am so grateful tonight that we will be able to hear their stories. Stories of perseverance and community, stories that I believe will touch your heart as well as encourage you and as you get a glimpse of what this generation of students values. Baccalaureate at Elizabethtown College has long celebrated student voices reflecting on this season of becoming, their academic journeys alongside their personal growth. Tonight you are going to hear from a wide range of our student population. We have with us tonight future teachers and writers, scientists and engineers, music and occupational therapists, and international business leaders. Our students have persevered through anatomy and physiology, organic chemistry and psychology. They have come alive as they have studied art, literature, political science, communications, and public health, and more. They range in worldviews and practice, and tonight we get to hear from Christians, Jews, and Muslims, Shintos and humanists, all of us all of them helping us to see what the world could be. As they share their gifts tonight, they offer a glimpse into the larger sacred journey of connections and core development. We will hear what has mattered to them, what our community walking alongside them has meant through the struggle and the strides to achieve their academic goals, and in this sacred moment, I hope that you will feel it as we engage with their student stories and sharing. And so with that hope, I want to invite Madison to lead us in an invocational prayer from her Christian tradition. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with gratitude, some nerves, and a great deal of excitement. We thank you for the past four years, for our first step on campus, when we were terrified for the years ahead and unsure of what may unfold, for what would arguably be the biggest change some of us have experienced. Now we all sit here with four years of highs and lows, memories that will remain well beyond our time here, friendships that will last a lifetime. But let us not forget, your guiding hand brought us here today. We thank you for the unique gifts you have bestowed upon each of us, and we pray that you will continue to remind us of our why. Rekindle the fire and passion that got us through the tough classes and late nights. Remind us of the interactions that changed our hearts for the better, the dreams and ideals we hold for ourselves, the people we want to be. God, we pray that you will help us to continue to chase our dreams. We pray that we will use these hopes and dreams to glorify you. Just like four years ago, we are scared and unsure, questioning the things we know now and the things we may not know yet. We come to you today, humbly asking for a future just as bright as our four years here. Be with us just as you have been and allow us to be beacons for change. Help us to go out and change our world just as you have allowed others to change ours. Thank you, God, for our four years at Elizabethtown. We ask this all in your son Jesus' name, amen.
The story of the class of 2024 is a unique one. We entered our college careers in a time of lockdown with high stress levels. We look back on the start where we had to complete our daily health checks and were only able to see half of each other's faces. But as the years went on, the restrictions were lifted and the anticipated college experience began. The spectators were allowed back at games, the clubs resumed activities, and the marketplace plexiglass dividers were finally replaced with community gatherings. Many things have changed since we started this journey four years ago, and the stress level shifted from uncertainty of COVID to cramming for exams and writing those long papers. The class of 2024 was finally becoming this community that we all strive for. As we approach the finish line of this journey, we can reflect on all those steps that we have taken to get here. And we look ahead to the new and exciting stress of leaving this place that we have called home as we enter this next chapter of our adventure. Now we look back on those days wondering where our time went, wondering how we are already preparing to cross the Dell. But here we are, ready to cross that finish line to go on and start adulting. The story of class of 2024 is unique to us, just like our individual stories are all unique to each other. We all took a different path full of twists and turns to the finish, but we made it standing strong and confident in ourselves today. We are here today preparing to take our final steps across that line together because of the people who motivated us to always take that one step forward. To our parents, families, friends, and faculty, thank you. Thank you for always being those cheerleaders on the sidelines supporting us. Without your persistence, you got it. We would not be here today. To my fellow Blue Jays, we wrote our story and tomorrow is the final page. The Dell is calling our names and waiting for us to finish in the same place we started nearly four years ago. Congratulations to all my Blue Jays of 2024. Isn't life amazing some days? Look at your own life. One day, you look back on all that you did, and you realize that it was never something that you came known for, or accomplished, or praised, that made you who you are today. As for me, getting something or losing something never made me who I am. Here at E-Town, when we play bingo, and row B4 is called, we sometimes yell back, B, for what? I believe the world would be a better place if more people asked the question, what do you want to be for? Here at E-Town, we are educated for service. And for me personally, as an occupational therapy major, I work in the service of others. And so I might ask, who will we be for? Or what will it be for? Over my time at Elizabethtown College, I learned through my professors and classmates to be an ear when someone needed an ear to listen, to be an eye to that friend afraid of what lied in front, a hand to the needy, a voice to the speechless, and a heart to the hopeless. Maybe one day, when we all look back, as I will, we may wonder, what was all this work for? What was all this time for? And what was all this money for? Your heart will go before you and lead you to be the person you are from here on out. That person for and from E-Town that challenged you to be you, to serve not just who, but for what? That person who grew up right before the eyes and ears of your professors, friends, and classmates, and families. That person that you were destined to be. The true, the only, and the beautiful, brave you. Trust that person now. As a member of the graduating class of 2024 that challenged you to be you, to not be served, but to serve, and when asked, what you will be for can be for helping others soar. Go E-Town. Thank you.
my reputation is simple. I'm that guy that dresses up every day. I am Mr. Mad Cow, and I am only referred to by my full name and a finger point. Evan Vaughn. My kids at Palmyra Area High School refer to me as King Vaughn, with some bequeathing upon me the very prestigious title of Keeper of the Shoes. These are a few of by far the best descriptors I can think of to describe myself, and without E-Town, I would not be able to share these in the same fashion. I have viewed E-Town differently because of my sense of humor. I came into college with a stricter worldview of college and the professional world as I worked to become a social studies teacher. I give a lot of credit to my connections with theater and especially Mad Cow Improv in my liberation from this strict mindset. I have participated in Mad Cow Improv from every semester, which, thanks in part to my older sister, has helped me to be able to see life through a more colorful lens, humor being a very colorful thing. I am known for my sarcasm at times, the only way I know how, but I learned that there are a lot of skills that are easily transferred to teaching and staying engaged with students, such as the ability to ask them to tell me a little bit more about what they're coming up with for a project, or to refute their silliness with a, and being off task with a simple yes and. Mad Cow has given me the confidence to be able to do what I love and make a difference. If I can talk about the intricacies and characteristics of that cloud looking, bland, but yet texturally interesting vegetable known as cauliflower, I know that I can talk about anything in front of the kids and make it interesting. If I can get students to take an interest in the everyday life and world that they live in and notice the little things, they'll be able to find the innumerable possibilities of their own story. My work is to engage the imagination and to find out what is it possible in telling a story, and the stories are still infinite. Back here at college, inside Mad Cow and in general, I always made sure I was the craziest character which is the exact opposite of what I need to be in the classroom. I have learned to keep people on their toes, and sometimes myself. Despite being on my toes for a ridiculously long time, E-Town has provided me with some of the best friends I could ask for. The Ginger Squad, despite the fact that over half of us are not redheads, somehow put up with me every day in the energy of a crazy man that I bring, and that fact boggles me every day. And I promise that while I'm graduating and leaving, I will send them crazy messages and memes long after we graduate. To everyone here tonight, don't be afraid to stand out and try to make people laugh. It builds community and can be a healing moment for all of us. And it can bring us back to the most important part of ourselves instantly. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, by the sun and its brightness, and the moon as it follows it, and the day as it unveils it, and by the night as it conceals it, and by the sky and the one who built it, and by the earth and the one who spread it, and by the soul and the one who made it, and then with the knowledge of right and wrong inspired it, he is indeed successful who causeth it to grow, and doomed is the one who corrupts it. The people of Thumu denied the truth because of their transgression, when the most wicked of them was roused to kill the she-camel. But the messenger of Allah warned them, do not disturb Allah's camel and her turn to drink. Still they defied him and slaughtered her, so their Lord crushed them for their crime, leveling all to the ground. And for him is no fear of its consequences. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-shamsi wa duhaha, wal-kamar idha talaha, والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طهاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلها من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذبت ثمود بضواها إذا بحث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وزقياها فكذبوه فأقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف أضباها
Starting our college career during the height of the pandemic was not how any of us would have imagined it to be. For me, it was especially a rough time, losing close loved ones, moving away from home, and being in a new state all of my own. I didn't know anyone else here, and I felt trapped in my room due to COVID, where distancing, distancing made it hard to know how I would make friends. I had gone through a number of mental health challenges during the school year, but it would be my peers and a strong sense of community that would help me tremendously. I found a tag community happening in classes like oral skills with Dr. Haynes in the midst of the hardest class and all the seriousness with the music therapy. It was also a joy to be creative, silly, free, and let all types of music share its joy. I still love that my SpongeBob presentation in response to John Cage's four minutes and 33 seconds was met by my peers with a standing ovation, mainly from my good friend, Wyatt. <laughs> it was moments like these that helped me get through the hardest moments, like the racism of my experience on this canvas. Those people know who they are. It happened, I was, when it happened, I was grateful to have people in my corner who were there for me when I experienced it and surrounded me when I didn't have the strength. I was proud to be part of a growing diversity on this campus and standing up for our right to exist in these spaces. And especially I had my best friend and flag fellow black music, uh, string performer who helped me feel confident in my voice, whether for advocacy or singing beside them for karaoke or open mic nights. I had also had my grandmother's spirit to guide me. She motivated me, always brought out the best version of myself and showed me love like no other. She was caring for others and made me want to share the same amount of love in the world. For every moment that I wanted to quit, I thought of her and knew that she wouldn't have liked that. So I kept going. And today I will keep going for her, my family, friends, as I prepare to do my internship in the Fulton County School System. Even though I went through the most challenging four years of my life, the connections that I made here at E-Town were once in a lifetime. The laughs, the sorrows, and the, and the memories that we have all shared. It will be something that I will never forget. When I first entered college, the only goal was to get my degree. I'm here to be a professional, learn my degree. The other stuff is just fluff. It doesn't matter. I was wrong, thank goodness. I managed to find a community of people who made me laugh until my chest hurt. People who had some downright wacky conversations with me. Case in point, which plan is the best at cleaning the air? And people who helped me power through some of the darkest times in my life. When I wanted to quit, give up on myself and everyone else, <clears throat> those people helped me through. Even if the support came in the form of acknowledgement, it was nice to know that if things were tough, there were people to listen. There were others who could shoulder my burden, and I, in turn, could help shoulder theirs. Those friends I have found have, in turn, found a special place in my heart. I was also fortunate in finding my mentor, Dr. McKay, who held me accountable and pushed me to do my best. If there's one thing I've learned while talking to people on campus here, it's that this is incredibly common. So many have been able to find great mentors that encourage their students or peers to put their best forward. All things considered, it's impressive considering that we came in during a pandemic. I encourage you to continue to look for good mentors and a strong support network wherever you go next, one that is both encouraging and supportive. We are adaptable, skilled, knowledgeable, and most importantly, helpful. That last, most important quality, the one past me didn't value, turned out to be the most vital thing here. It's in our motto, after all. We are educated, and now it's our duty to serve others. It's fine to be a professional, to be smart and driven in your field, but it's more important to be a good person to do right by others, and do right by yourself, too. With that, I encourage everyone to think of the good they've done, both for themselves and others, and if I may humbly ask a favor from all of you, it's to try to do something good or to continue doing good. It shouldn't be someone you like, but it should be someone who needs a good turn. The gift of kindness from my friends, mentors, and even total strangers has kept me going through my four years. We've all been given this gift, and it would be a tragedy to squander something so wonderful by refusing to share it.
while we as students will be taking away a diploma, we will also be taking away years of experiences as well. In my experiences at Elizabethtown College, I have seen how the E-Town campus community strives to show genuine care, kindness, and empathy, all of which are things I hope we each will take with us as we move to the next chapter of our lives. To begin, E-Town has shown genuine care for the individual. My senior year of high school, I was really unsure, unsure of where to go for school and what to major in. I knew I did not want to feel like a number in a big school. The people at the February open house made me feel welcomed immediately, and I saw that this community would be so supportive. Since that time, I have felt seen, known, valued, and needed at Elizabethtown College by my professors, peers, and so many others. From seeing Willie's smiling face in the marketplace to Dr. Whitmire's invitation to take a little brain break and see an actual brain in the neuro lab. There are so many friendly faces on campus that have brightened my day. Genuine care is something I hope we take from our time at E-Town. I also have noticed the impact of the small kindnesses that are unexpected. One time in my drawing class, I dropped all of my big drawing papers on the floor and someone was so quick to help me to pick them up. That same day, someone saw me struggling to manage my lunch tray and they were kind enough to open the bagel door for me. <laughs> Another time when there was not enough bowls in the marketplace for the fruit um, and the girl in front of me went out of her way to find bowls so that others could have some. These may seem like insignificant actions that don't require much effort, but they are small ripples that lead to waves of kindness, small things that lead to great things. The impact of their kindness is infinite. Kindness is something I hope we take from our time at E-Town. Additionally, the empathy that Elizabethtown College shows is beautiful. A great tragedy happened this year as we lost the precious life of Joe Russo. Although I didn't know Joe, it was beautiful to see the campus community come together to support one another and celebrate the beautiful life Joe lived. And I could feel a powerful light of love surrounding us. Elizabethtown College's empathy is something I hope we will continue to bring with us into our next chapter. As we prepare to walk off the commencement stage and into the next step of our lives, my hope is that we take with us and never forget the genuine care, kindness, and empathy of the Elizabethtown College community. We are Blue Jays always. Thank you.
Hello. Some of you may know me well. Some of you may have only seen me around on campus. And some of you might have no idea who I am. You might feel somewhat similar with many of these faces being friends, people you're familiar with, and some are complete strangers. There may be one or two you hope never to see again, but some of these faces you hope to see as often as possible in the future. When we arrived on campus in August of 2020, the summer of COVID bled into our freshman year. Half of our face was hidden behind a mask, both indoors and out. That is, if you follow the restrictions, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, though in private moments, we all had the chance to let the mask drop and show our true faces, both literally and figuratively. From there, we developed friendships and relationships that we plan to hold on to as tight as we can for as long as we can in hopes of a future where those relationships last. That brings me to my main point, that the future, that chaotic, cloudy picture of what we all individually think comes next. The Apostle Paul once said that now we see in a mirror dimly, but soon we shall see the full picture. Maybe that feels true to this moment, in that blurry haze of the successes, failures, trials, and triumphs of the future, right now many of us are probably worried about what comes next. There may be uncertainty, even if you have jobs lined up, graduate schools you're already enrolled in, a big vacation planned, or if you're lucky, another semester or a fifth year at Elizabethtown to finish up. <laughs> whatever path you walk, whatever choices you've made, both good and bad, they have led you here to this very moment, the end of a very short chapter of your life, but one of the most important you will ever have. Tomorrow, you will turn the page on this chapter and you will start writing a new one. It might make you anxious, bringing you back to when you were trying to submit an essay before 11.59 p.m. on the day it's due. <laughs> During his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus once said, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Whatever comes next, whatever life throws your way, always hold on to those relationships and the memories you created with those you met at Elizabethtown College. These will remind you not to fear the future because we came into college during one of the hardest times of our lives and still persevered to the end, building relationships and experiences that will last a lifetime. Instead, look forward towards the future with hope and all you hold from your relationships to your increased knowledge to your experiences. It will all give you the strength and the drive to make the best of all you have absorbed while at Elizabethtown. Let it all help you make the world a better place. Thank you, good luck, and God bless. We all hold on to where we've been because it's familiar, but we all hope for our future, to be able to grow and live fulfilling lives. When we came to college, we all tried to find a sense of familiarity, despite the, all of the uncertainties of attending college during a global pandemic. Some of us found comfort living at home while completing online courses. Others kept in touch with families and old friends through social media and frequent trips home. Um, some of us found comfort living at home. <laughs> Others kept in, some even commuted to school. Personally, I found comfort in sharing a dorm room with my twin sister, Lisa, during our first year of college. Um, however, despite all the challenges of the pandemic in college, we all had hope. Hope to succeed, hope to make new friends, hope that we chose the right path to take us where we need to be. Throughout our college careers, we created connections that we held on to. Connections with friends, connections with the professors and advisors of our chosen major, and connections on a sports team or a club. College also gave us new hopes for our future. Hope to pursue grad school, hope to complete a research through SCAD program, hope to win that best prize at bingo, or even hope to simply pass like, that one dreaded class with that one professor. For me, I, hope, um, I found hope for my future through the Momentum program here at college. 
As a fourth generation college student, I thought my only hope was to make new friends and simply get my degree. I didn't dare hope for anything more than surviving college. However, through the Momentum Peer Mentorship Program, I learned to inspire, imagine, and impact. I found hope in achieving greater things and thriving in college. My hope was planted during my first week on campus at Momentum Orientation. This led me to become one of the Kinesis Peer Academic Advisors to foster hope to the future graduates at E-Town. My hope continued to grow with the support of my friends, the Ginger Squad, and professors who guided me through my college career at E-Town. I enjoyed influencing the lives of those who came after me, and I hope we can continue to lead the way to a brighter future. I will forever appreciate my experience in the mental program as I step into life after college. Here at Elizabethtown College, we all had our own unique experiences. The challenges of freshman year are now an accomplishment. Hold on to the past three or four years. Hold on to it so that when you walk across the stage and start life after college, you know how much you are able to achieve. Hold on to your friends and support system so when life gets tough, you, they have your back. Hold on to your research and internship experiences and use it as a stepping stone. But also, don't forget to hope. Hope to thrive out there in the real world. Hope to make an impact on the world around you. Hope to get your dream job and hope to further your ed education. Hold on to where you've been, but hope for your future. And when you need encouragement, remember that you are Blue Jays always and we will fly. I wanted to start by saying I found the topic of all we hold and all we hope to be very ironic. Because tomorrow, when we walk across that stage, we are letting go of this chapter of our life. We will all have to find something new to hold to fill the hope that this school gave us. As an engineering student and pole vault team captain, I found my identity shaped by hard work and rewarding feedbacks, as well as new challenges and heights to reach for. In some ways, I've already had to face the reality of replacing this hope. This past January, at the first track meet of the season, I suffered a hamstring tear that would put me out for the rest of my college career. It was a quick end to the sport I dedicated eight years of my life to. My final chance to give it all I had was gone. I went through some dark days after that. My appetite fizzled away. I had no motivation to go to PT, no motivation to do homework, because I felt I had no purpose left on this campus but to leave it. To get out of my depression, I eventually had to come to peace with the fact that my sports career was over and realized that I needed a positive change. I was able to fill that need by coaching the underclassmen. While it was hard to coach my fellow teammates, knowing that I should be jumping with them, it was worth helping them achieve their goals where I couldn't achieve my own. The hope they had to jump higher and clear new heights filled the hope I used to, I used to have for my jumps. While I didn't let go of my love for pole vaulting, I found a new way to enjoy what I held nearest to my heart. Now, as we all go out into the next stage of our lives, I implore you to find new hope, taking all that you've received here and continuing to invest in something bigger than yourself, whether it be a job or continuing your education. I'm not telling you to forget this place and everything you ever did here, but it's time to use what you learned here to grab onto new hope. You never know when you could be giving someone else the hope they desperately need when you're grabbing onto your own. And for that, I thank not only my fellow pole vaulters, but the entire community here for being the hope I needed in my own time of need.
not words, but deeds from the Talmud. Be wise not only in words, but in deeds. Mere knowledge is not the goal, but action. Know the God of your fathers and serve him by your deeds. Let not your wisdom exceed your deeds, lest you be like a tree with many branches, but few roots. If the thoughts of your heart be pure, it is likely that so will be the works of your hand. Accustom yourself to do good. Before long, it will become your chief delight. One good deed leads to another, as every evil deed leads to more wrongdoing. If other deeds do good through you, their deeds will be accounted to you as your own, through it is not incumbent upon you to complete the work. You are not free from doing all you possibly can. Judge a man by his deeds, and you will not be led to false judgment. Say little and do much, for by your deeds shall you be judged. If you are, if you are wise and rich, let your deeds reveal your wisdom and your wealth. Honor a man for what he is, but honor a man more for what he does. Honor not a man for his possessions alone. Honor him most for the use he makes of them. When a man departs this world, neither silver nor gold nor precious stones accompany him. He is remembered only for his love of learning and his good deeds. Happy is a man who is rich in good deeds, for he shall be honored in life and be remembered long after for his goodness. Thank you. Good evening. When I look back at the last four years, many things come to mind. I think about the smiles of the friends I made. I think about the pristine beauty of Southern Europe. I think about the, be the beautiful music I never thought I'd make. I think about the valuable business experience I've gained. And most importantly, I think about the ways I've changed as a person. Like it was yesterday, I remember the fear I felt when I decided to attend Elizabethtown College, April 22nd, 2020. I had been wrestling between a few colleges in my mind for months, and something just snapped at me that day. I came downstairs, and I told my family that I had made a decision, and I chose Elizabethtown. Next thing I knew, I was making my deposit, and I was posing for pictures for my mom's Facebook with my acceptance letter that had been sitting in my room for months. I went to bed that night in fear. It's pretty natural to fear the unknown, and I had no idea how these next four years were going to go. Was I going to like it here? Was I going to make any friends? Was the food going to be any good? And were my classes going to be in person? But then, I arrived to this wonderful community that all of us have built together. I felt myself blossoming despite the restrictions. I met so many amazing people, I made so many amazing connections, and I was even just fine. Elizabethtown also gave me the opportunity to make lifelong friends from the first few weeks I stepped onto this campus, and the opportunity to make many more this way. I grew so much. My preconceived notions about the world were challenged in more ways than one. Elizabethtown provided me with the opportunity to study abroad in Croatia, where I was able to travel to places I never thought I'd see, from little Liechtenstein nestled in the Alps to one of the world's newest nations in Kosovo. If I told high school me that I would have joined an acapella group, he would have never believed me. But I did, and I unlocked a passion I never knew I had. Elizabethtown provided me with the opportunity to expand my horizons and try out multiple career paths, ultimately landing me my first job in business. Now, as I look back on these past four years, I hold these memories near and dear to my heart. I will never forget my time here. Thank you, not only to Elizabethtown, but to all of you for all of these memories. Thank you. On my birthday last June, my mom posted an atypical Facebook post for me. It was my toddler report card for Wilmington Montessori School. On the report, it said, 
Will often approaches staff with little regard for personal injury or harm. <laughs> Since it was my birthday, my mom took this on a positive spin and, said, and changed the word staff with life and said this was emblematic of me. Again, in a good way. Anyway, I guess my mom was right. When I used to play baseball, without a thought in the world, I would dive into fences to go after the ball. And most of the time, I would not catch it. <laughs> Which is okay with me because I tried. Yet, when I signed up for a motion this past fall, as a first-time dancer and a first-time tap dancer, I understood the personal harm I could cause myself, given my limited dance skills. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Which normally would be nothing to fear. Yet, while I signed up as a joke, I knew I wouldn't be alone. I had a team of friends, led by Fredolin Dong and Emily Peters, who were choreographing this dance, and I did not want to let them down. We were to perform a tap dance version of Runaway Baby by Bruno Mars. And I tell you what, at first I was terrible. And I tell you what, 10 weeks in, I was less worried about the personal harm I'd cause myself and way more worried about the eyesore that I would cause everybody in the crowd. <laughs> so at this point, I did kind of what is hard to do for me. I asked for help. I asked Freddie and Emily if they could give me private lessons on what would become Will Wednesdays. <laughs> so with six weeks to go, Emily, Freddie, and Freddie's boyfriend, Adam, another first time tapper, indulged ourselves in a Bruno Mars every Wednesday. Eventually, the overwhelming routine began to connect in my head and the tap steps began to sound like English. And slowly, I began to have fun. After these lessons and countless mirror takes in my apartment, shout out Orange, Adam and I were ready. Well, ready enough. I tell this story because what started out as a joke commitment to Freddie, which could have became quite the embarrassment, turned out to be a time and memory in my college career. I'll never forget. Freddie and Adam gave Adam and I a shot, and we had a lot of fun. And so to everyone in the crowd, whatever it is, make sure you find your tap dance. Find your risk. Get out of your comfort zone and maybe have a little less regard for personal injury, at least when it comes to the ego. As for me, between emotion and MX E-Town, I am tapped out of tapping. <laughs> but I look forward to the next challenge, whatever that might be. Thank you. In reflecting on my time at Elizabethtown College, I realized that the busier I got, the more I got trapped in the motions. I made it through college in three years, but my schedule still felt like four years of experience. The list of to-dos could get easily mundane, and it felt like all I did was go to class, eat lunch, do homework, sleep, and repeat. But then each summer, I would go home and suddenly miss college and all the little things that would make it fun and worthwhile. Sometimes it was hard to remember these things during the semester. The stress, tests, schedule juggling, future planning, sleepiness, and wishing for more really get in the way of remembering the good things that happened during our time here. Despite the repetition of college, I have such gratitude for the moments that made the slow day special, like when Taylor Swift plays on WWCE during my walk to class, or on Chicken Tender Day in the Marketplace, which is miraculously always on my worst days when I need a pick-me-up. I appreciated my professors making learning fun, like Dr. Roy's puns on the psychological statistics slides or having class outside with Dr. Lorenzen. Working in admissions, it was exciting to see students deposit to E-Town during Accepted Students Days, as it reminded me of when I chose E-Town and was blissfully unaware of all of the amazing things ahead of me here. I can even find joy in unfortunate situations, like when the rain flooded the Schlabi multiple times, or when someone honored the old tree lighting tree with a picture of the Lorax, Animal encounters on campus have never disappointed, whether it be watching people get chased by the goose or when I saw a squirrel drag an entire slice of pizza out of a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I appreciated the little moments of care, like when my devotion to the blue bean was rewarded with a free drink, with Sharon always asking me how I was doing. The weekend conferences with Lighthouse, the late night drives to Wawa, and cheering my friends on at Emotion or musical concerts all made me realize that the little things are what make this place special. Class of 2024, hold on to these little things that brought us so much joy. When you look back, you won't remember the mundane or the quiz you failed or getting up at 8 a.m. You'll remember sitting on the floor with your friends, laughing the hardest you've ever laughed. So as we step into these new paths of life, don't get stuck in the mundane. Look for the little things that make you smile and make a day worthwhile. Don't leave here tomorrow without thanking E-Town for all the smiles and the laughs. Thank you. There were many reasons I decided to go to Elizabethtown College. It was close to home, which was convenient with the uncertainties of the COVID-19 epidemic, and I could continue all my interests from high school, engineering, music, and running. It had everything I needed in one place. But reflecting on my time here, I realized the reasons that brought me here are different than the reasons I stayed. E-Town turned out to be the perfect college in more ways than I could have expected. It was a place for me to grow and find my true self. This encouraging community made me more confident in myself and believe I could achieve anything. I've achieved academic success, my greatest track times, and recorded my first songs, including my claim to fame, the Pizza Dave song. <laughs> I have had life-changing interactions, conversations that made me question what I believe in and interactions that made me feel empowered and hopeful. Last summer, I had the pleasure of going to the Interfaith Summit which introduced me to amazing people with the same goals of unity, acceptance, and understanding. I believed in diversity, equity, and belonging before college, but seeing it firsthand made me realize how truly important it is and how fortunate I am to be at a school that supports it and does its best to make everyone feel welcome. Before college, I had a clear understanding that everyone has a unique voice, but I lacked the tools to express this importance to others who fail to see the importance of accepting others. This environment transformed me into a confident individual as I am outspoken about what is important to me. During my four years here, E-Town provided exactly what I expected. I played in music ensembles, ran new PRs on the track, and last but certainly not least, got my degree in engineering. But throughout my experiences here, I came to realize that E-Town was the perfect place for developing the person I didn't know I was going to be.
To say I am a different person now than when I entered Elizabethtown College would be an understatement. When I started at E-Town, my original concept of service was assisting others. I gave to others, but never made myself a priority. Here, I quickly learned that when you serve others, they are not the only ones who gain something. I have been a resident assistant for three years. When I began my journey as an RA, I saw it as an opportunity to simply serve my fellow students and build on my leadership skills. Straight from the start, it was evident that being a bridge to resources is a significant component of the job, but not the only aspect. Residence life places a heavy emphasis on self-care. I discovered that to take care of others, I must take care of myself. I cannot give anything if my battery is empty. Throughout my three years, I learned that it was okay to ask for help and to admit that I could not do everything on my own. I saw firsthand that asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. My time in residence life taught me how to advocate, not only for others, but for myself. I began to pursue resources on campus and at home to better my college and post-academic career. I sought out academic help to combat my learning disabilities and have found individuals who hold similar marginalized identities as mine to create a community. I learned that all the things I pushed my residents to seek were available to me too. I was given the opportunity to work with fellow staff members to hold events that connect the residential communities, further growing my skills in teamwork. I reflected on my personal conflict style to evaluate the best route of action if me and my fellow staff members had a conflict between us. We were given a safe space to communicate what we needed from each other as a team to help us discover what we needed from ourselves as individuals. These are just some of the skills that I will take with me as I leave Elizabethtown College. I have grown confident in my abilities to express what I need and know there's no shame in doing so. When referring to residence life, we often utilize the hashtag LiveEtown. That is because the job is not just a job for us, but our way of life. Every day we wake up and have a purpose, to assist others. But throughout my time as an RA, I have seen that this job does not just help residents reach their fullest potential, but helps us as RAs thrive as we continue our journey of self-discovery. This past semester, I made a commitment to reading and landed on a book titled A Gentleman in Moscow. A more Toll's story follows a count who is sentenced to confinement within a luxury hotel by Soviet leaders, a reality that I learned would not change. The count yearns to find purpose as he is deeply shaped by new encounters with guests in the hotel lobby. I believe that one quote from this book perfectly describes the changes in how people build relationships with others as well as themselves. Listen closely. Amor Tolls writes, after all, what can a first impression tell us about someone we've just met for a minute in the lobby of a hotel? By their very nature, human beings are so capricious, so complex, so delightfully contradictory, that they deserve not only our consideration, but our reconsideration and our unwavering determination to withhold our opinion until we have engaged them in every possible setting at every possible hour. Our class entered Elizabethtown in our own hotel lobby through Facebook profiles, random roommate assignments, and Zoom meetings. These controlled environments made the process of meeting people awkward for our class who had felt cut off from the world for several months leading up to that first fall semester. But as we began bumping into each other again, we grew above these conditions and created new connections, some that lasted only a few minutes and others that lasted for four years and continue to grow. Whether a relationship led you to find a new passion or just help you do your laundry, these changes, large and small, defined who we were in college and the people that we strive to be after it. In reflecting on Toll's words, I realized that those hard times raised my own anxieties and concerns about perfectionism in the eyes of others. 
Over the past two years, I've overcome these thoughts and was truly moved by the importance of the ability to give myself grace. As you reflect on your time at E-Town, consider times where you deserved a, mo a moment for yourself or space to change. These could be times when you made a mistake, faulted under pressure, or maybe lacked the confidence to take action. Remember, the experiences you had here are not defined by the setting. The buildings, the green spaces, and even this chapel only anchor us to our interactions with others and the legacies we leave. Life will present you with a series of first impressions of people and opportunities. I challenge you to interact with all of these situations in all settings, with grace for both yourself and for those around you. After all, you are so capricious, so complex, so delightfully contradictory, that you deserve your own consideration and reconsideration, especially when you find yourself in your own hotel lobby. Thank you. Imagine this, your first semester in college is spent with being around 7,000 miles away from your classmates with a time difference of 12 hours. First year classes that were at midnight and getting to know your friends only through Zoom. Such was my first semester's experience as a college student at E-Town. One would ima imagine that it was a lonely, boring semester because of the constant solitude. However, E-Town persisted. My cohort, the class of 2024, persisted. There was no shortage of a sense of community that I felt from miles away as I was able to attend events and club meetings and meet my new fellow students. That semester is when I first heard of E-Town's Gender Sexuality Alliance, or GSA. In a Zoom meeting that could not have had more than five people, I saw potential and purpose. On my tiny computer screen, I saw a world open up that I had not been exposed to before. As an international student who grew up in the United Arab Emirates, where LGBTQ plus identities are still criminalized, I knew that I wanted to dedicate my college career to expanding this club and ensuring that all incoming E-Town students can feel the comfort I felt when I knew that such a club existed. Silenced for years, I would not let a chance to make my voice heard slip away. And so, I spoke proudly to a room that was getting fuller with each passing week as more E-Town students began to feel comfortable to express themselves on campus. This story showcases one of my favorite things about E-Town. If you have the passion and will, E-Town will support and stand behind you. Time and again, E-Town supported my efforts to build a safe space for LGBTQ plus people. Just last month, E-Town celebrated their third annual E-Town Dust Pride, a month-long celebration of LGBTQ plus identities on campus. With impending graduation, I cannot help but wish to rewind the time and live my college experience all over again with my fellow graduates. We stood together as a community since day one, and I will carry the lessons that I have learned from my cohort with me for the rest of my life. I will remember the moment when I got to walk across the stage with all the other students during graduation, and I will also remember waking up at 1 a.m. to join a club Zoom meeting and know that I have made the right choice. These past four years will leave me with unforgettable memories and a lifelong community. Thank you. From the library streets of Tokyo, Japan, to the calm campus of Elizabethtown College, my journey reminds me of the Japanese word kiseki, meaning miracle, ki meaning curiosity, and seki meaning footprint. Outline the profound belief that every miracle leaves behind a trail of curiosity, shaping our journey and inspiring us to seek wonders beyond imagination. Our journey through college has been a ser series of miracles, each moment filled with its own challenges, achievements, and lessons. Kiseki also mirrors my journey, a curious trail of footprints through the maze of life. When I first stepped on American soil in 2020 as an international student from Japan, during a global pandemic. I felt like a lost sushi roll in a sea of hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
language barriers, culture shocks, and many others. But did I give up? Not a chance. I took each challenge head on and never stopped smiling. Through our time here, we've dared to embrace the vastness of the world, seeking to make memories that transcend borders and cultures. From studying abroad in England to solo adventures in Morocco, my passport stamps tell stories of resilience, growth, and the occasional lost in translation moment. We've learned that true growth only emerges from the shadows of fear, and every sunrise presents an opportunity to rewrite our story. Despite the chaos, we've discovered the power of bringing people together, weaving a tapestry of harmony from the threat of our diverse experiences. We hail from different corners of the globe, carrying within us the stories of our heritage and the dreams of our ancestors. Our diversity is not merely a coincidence, but a reflection of the unlimited possibilities of our world and the beauty of human expression. And so you see, with an understanding of Kiseki, I could not have achieved being here without each one of you. In this moment, I would like to express my deepest gratitude for the infinite support and love that I have received from my family and friends throughout this wild journey. Their encouragement, understanding, and belief in me have been the pillars of strength that have guided me through the challenges. To my parents, who sacrificed their sleep to make a phone call with a 14-hour time difference, and to my friends, who patiently taught me all the American slang and tuned me into an honorary American with a Japanese accent. <laughs> I am forever grateful. We all share this moment of miracle. Let's carry with us the spirit of Kiseki, the curiosity to explore and the resilience to overcome. While we may not control the external forces that shape our lives, we hold within us the power to choose our responses, our actions, and ultimately our destiny. And above all, let us embrace a smile can bring light to the darkest moments we encounter. So here's to us, the class of 2024. May our journey be filled with laughter, adventure, and endless sushi rolls. Thank you. Jessica Pergolini. I am the Vice President of the Class of 2024, and I'm going to be reading the letter from the Class of 2024 that is written for the next year's incoming students. Dear Class of 2028, we wanted to share a few words of wisdom as someone who has been where you are. First and foremost, we understand the mix of emotions you may be experiencing right now. Excitement, nervousness, anticipation, and maybe even a touch of homesickness. Rest assured, these feelings are entirely normal and are shared by many of your peers. Remember, you are not alone in this experience, and there is a vast support network here to help you navigate through it all. As you step onto campus for the first time, take a deep breath. Hopefully, it's a chocolate day when you do this, and soak it all in. This is the beginning of an incredible chapter in your life filled with endless opportunities for growth, learning, and personal development. Embrace the diversity of thought, culture, and backgrounds that you will encounter among your classmates and faculty. It is through these interactions that you will gain a deeper understanding of the world around you and form lifelong friendships. These are the people that you enjoy, will enjoy late night runs to the J truck, study in the blue bean, and win and lose at bingo with. Those first conversations with a peer in a class will turn into hour long conversations taking place in each other's dorms late into the night. College is about discovering who you are and what you're passionate about. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and explore new interests and hobbies. Whether, whether it's joining a club, participating in community service, or studying abroad, seize every opportunity to broaden your horizons and expand your perspectives. 
while the next four years will undoubtedly be filled with highs and lows, remember to prioritize self-care and balance. Take care of your physical, mental, and emotional well-being, and don't hesitate to reach out for support when you need it. Whether it's talking to a friend, visiting the counseling services, or seeking guidance from a trusted mentor, there are resources available to help you navigate through any challenges that you may face. We asked the members of the class of 2024 what advice that they have for the incoming first years, and these are some of the responses that we got. Don't be afraid to try new things as soon as you arrive. Cherish every moment, it's over before you blink. It's okay not to graduate with the degree you started college with. Breathe, you'll be okay. Keep reaching out to meet new people even if it's scary. Get involved on campus even if you're not 100% sure, try it out. Don't take any moment for granted. It goes by way too fast. So class of 2028, make sure you cherish every moment of your college experience. It will fly by ma faster than you can imagine. Make the most of every lecture, every late night study session, and every spontaneous adventure. Before you know it, you'll be the ones writing a letter to the inc incoming class of 2032, reminiscing about the incredible journey you've had and the memories you've made along the way. Welcome to E-Town class of 2028. We can't wait to see all that you will accomplish during your time here and beyond. I would now like to invite my fellow 2024 cohort members to join me at the light. Hi, my name is Abigail Lindsay and I am the class president. The class of 2024 has tried to, has tried to leave a lasting impression here at Elizabethtown College. Through our first year, working to spread information about American Sign Language via social media and hosting an American Sign Language event. Through our class Senate Advocacy Project of Sustainability, we worked to host an Earth Day event to provide sustainable activities for students to participate in, as well as spread information about recycling practices here on campus. As well as leading a pumpkin recycling initiative during the fall semester, where bins would be placed outside residence halls and then taken to a local farm where the pumpkins would be fed to the animals. As we prepare to pass the flame to next year's class, we now invite the class, the class of 2025 officers to come forward. We, the officers of the class of 2024, are about to pass on the mantle of leadership to you, the class of 2025. We want to remind you that in countless ways, the senior class members shape the climate of the campus and determine the experience that underclassmen will have here at Elizabethtown College. This is an awesome responsibility and not to be taken lightly. The senior class officers are responsible for taking leadership and shaping a positive environment for intellectual, social, emotional, spiritual, and physical development of students on campus. The senior class officers lead the senior class in working to create a campus that truly educates for service and is also an enjoyable place to live for four years. If you, the officer of the class of 2025, are willing to accept this responsibility, please say, we will. We will. The large candle has been burning throughout the service that represents the light of the class of 2024 has shown at Elizabethtown College. As we light the candles of the officers of the class of 2025, we now officially pass the mantle of leadership to the class of 2025. The large candle also represents the light of the members of the class of 2024 will shed on the world as we end our journey here at Elizabethtown and step in the future. We will now begin the candle lighting ceremony.
Four years ago, at our first induction, we briefly shared a litany and lit candles in the Dow as we received our pins and said hello to each other and to Elizabethtown College, even if it was six feet apart from everyone else. Tonight, as we prepare to say farewell to our college years, we want to reclaim the intention that time and the light as our community together. I invite the members of the class of 2024 to stand as we read, as we read together the litany. Over the past, over the last four years, we, the class of 2024, have shared a journey. Tonight, we stand on the threshold of a new adventure. We remember that the college seal calls for Deus Lux et Veritas, and the college motto is educate for service. Throughout our lives, let us continue our quest for knowledge, justice, and truth. Let us always remember that the light of ages shines unwavering, even in the midst of darkness. While our candles are still lit, I just simply want to say thank you for trusting in coming to this place during the midst of a pandemic, for your stories, for all that you have shared in its beauty, in its laughter, its joy, in the things that have been so important that they have brought us to tears this night. I would invite you to extinguish your candles now so that you can give this class one more time a round of applause. you seniors to be seated just for a moment. Thank you again for all of you who came out to share in this time. As we prepare to leave this place and we're looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow out in the Dell, I hope though tonight that you will find a continued space to be able to share and connect here, just taking the time to talk with one another. You're more than welcome to do that outside in the lobby or anywhere on campus. Thank you for sharing this evening with us. Please note that as you leave, we have receptacles for your candles and we would invite you to put them in those receptacles as you, um, for, thank you for returning them so that we may use them again. As we prepare to depart, will you now receive this blessing? Class of 2024, we are better because you took the risk to make this place a part of your journey. Now we bless your steps onward. May you discover the light that you have carried within you is also a future guide. May the community you built and the stories created endure and ever remind you of all you cherished here. May you be centered in the knowledge and experiences you gathered. May the roots and strengths that you nourished here ground you as you prepare to serve and work, learn and hope in this world. In all things, may peace and the strength of hope be with you all your journey through. Blessings and congratulations. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>